Hi everybody, it's Jamie here from CadTech Systems, one of the application engineers. I'm just going to take some time today to talk about cabinetry within SolidWorks, so how to create things like kitchen cabinets um, and that kind of thing uh, in SolidWorks. And also, particular emphasis on smart parts, so using smart parts, maybe bringing thing in, things in that do things, so for instance, you know, cutting holes and adding other components for themselves. Uh, so we're going to have a, a look at that, but particularly just within kind of um, cabinetry. So I've broken it into three sections this morning. Uh, we're going to be looking at multi-body part design to begin with. Um, so that's looking at uh, creating multiple part, multiple bodies within just a single part file. We're going to be looking at then technical drawings and how technical drawings can then report things like the cut lists. And then finally, we're going to have a look at creating and using some smart parts. The data set that we're going to create is on the left hand side that you see there. So that's just a kind of standard kitchen base cabinet. Um, and that's what we're going to design. So we've got some feet in there, we've got some hinges and some handles, etc., etc. But that's primarily what we're going to be concentrating on creating as a part of the demo today. So to begin with, multi-body parts, um, it's basically a way of changing the default behavior of SolidWorks to not merge the bodies together. So when we actually usually create parts in SolidWorks or create features in SolidWorks, it merges them all together to create one kind of homogenous body. In multi-body part design, it doesn't. It leaves them as individual entities. So it means we can create multiple panels in one part. Um, primarily, it's a lot quicker than using assembly. So instead of having a, um, a separate part file for your left cheek, a separate part, part file for your right cheek, we can have all of the panels within an individual part file, which is a great way and a quick way of managing that kind of data. We're able to export our individual panels if we want to. Um, and we're actually able to export all the bodies out into an assembly as well. So we can actually take our multi-body part and turn it into an assembly if that's what we want to do. Um, but importantly, it automatically creates cut lists for us. So that's the really important thing. OK, let's have a look at how we get on and create multi-body parts. So over in SolidWorks, first thing I'm going to do is just to open a new document. So File and New, and I'm going to select my part. There's a couple of things I need to do to begin with, and that's to tell SolidWorks that I'm going to create a multi-body part. So up here under my Weldments tab, I'm just going to click on Weldment, and that's then going to add this as a feature. And now the default behavior is changed not to merge those things together as I start creating bodies. So that's a great way of doing that just to start with. The next thing I'm going to do is just to change the material. We're going to make this um, carcass out of MDF. It's going to be melamine faced. Um, so I'm going to just set the material of MDF. Now this is a, um, a custom material that I've created. It simply holds the density so we can evaluate the weight and that's it. Um, we're going to then apply a different appearance to make it look like it's melamine, melamine face. But it's, um, that's just a custom material I've added there. OK, the next thing I'm going to do is to create a set of global variables. Now the chances are that if I'm designing base cupboards, um, then I want them to be able to come in different sizes and I want to be able to modify those really, really quickly. So instead of modifying each feature every time I want to make a change, I'm going to create now a set of global variables that I can come just to one place and then change all of the details of that particular design. Now that's under Tools and Equations and it brings up this box here. So let's start adding some global variables. So the first one is going to be the width. So let's just put in width there. And my width is going to be, in this instance, is going to be 600 uh, millimeters. So let's just pop 600 into that. Then I'm going to create a new global variable called, in fact, let's just go back to those, sorry. We're going to create a new global variable called uh, worktop height. So obviously we're going to have a bit of worktop on the top of this cupboard. And I want to be able to uh, change the thickness that I'm using as that as well. So I'm going to say 45. Then we'll have a, another global variable. We're going to concentrate on the worktop just for a bit. We're going to have a worktop um, thickness. <clears throat> so we're going to have different thicknesses. Sorry, I've got these the wrong way around, actually. Let's put in the worktop thickness is 45. And the worktop height in total is 900. So that's from the floor uh, to the top of the worktop. Then under worktop thickness, we'll have a worktop overhang. So how much does it overhang on the front from the front door? We're going to say, let's just go for an inch for that one. Then we'll have another global variable called worktop uh, depth. So how much is it front to back? And we'll say that's 600. So all of these things might need to change if we're doing a custom installation of a of a certain bespoke kitchen, we're going to need to change some of these values. Um, then we'll have under worktop desk, we'll have what do we need? A door thickness as well. Door thickness is going to be this is just in case I want it to be different to the overall thicknesses that I'm using. I'm going to say I'm going to use 24 mil MDF for that. And then we're going to have at the bottom, we're going to have an overall thickness. Um, so specifying the general thickness, I'm going to use 18 mil MF MDF for this. 
and then finally let's just add one more so going back to my tools equations we're going to add a plinth height so how high do I want my plinth to be and we're going to say uh, that's going to be a let's go for 150 okay so when I okay this this is the basically the one place that I need to come now to be able to change all of my data so let's just okay that and get on so on my front plane I'm just going to drop a sketch um, I'm getting to my sketch tools just by using a mouse gesture so just by holding and pressing my right hand mouse button down I can bring up my gesture wheel and if I move right over shortcut bar it brings up that shortcut bar so if, if ever you're wondering where has he just got that toolbar from uh, that's where it's from so I'm just going to draw a center line to begin with so let's get it onto the origin something like that and then I'm going to use a center rectangle so this is a front view of my carcass now the reason I've dropped it away from my origin is because I want my origin to actually be my floor level so I'm just going to specify that this number here instead of actually putting in my plinth height here I'm going to say is equal to that global variable that I created called plinth height and it changes it to 150 then I'm going to have a total height from here up to the top of my carcass and that is going to be equal to, now there's going to be a bit of a sum here, this is going to be equal to my worktop height minus my worktop thickness. So this means I can come in, I can change any of these and it will make sure that my worktop height is at the correct place, or sorry, the size of my carcass is at the right place. So we're going to have worktop height minus worktop thickness. And then we're going to have a dimension here for my overall width. So again, I'm just pressing the equals key. This is going to be equal to my overall width. And you can see now that that fully constrains my model. So at this stage, I'm just going to then turn these lines into uh, dotted entities. So just by clicking on construction geometry, that kind of our solo works to ignore it, if you like. And then I'm going to draw my side cheek. So we've got one on the left. This is looking at the front of the unit and one on the right. Next, I'm going to ask SolidWorks that these two lines here are the same. So I'm just going to set a relationship just to manage that behavior. And then over here, I'm just going to specify that this dimension is equal to that global variable I created called overall thickness. And again, if at the end of this session I've designed it in its entirety and somebody says, well, actually, you know, you could do with making this out of 15 instead of 18, then I only need to come and change the one global variable and my whole model is going to update as opposed to going in and changing each individual feature. OK, and then I'm going to extrude it. So just using my extrude key. And again, this is going to be a small equation in the fact that this is going to be my... Uh, my worktop depth minus my uh, worktop overhang minus my door thickness. So again, all of these things are things that I can come and change at some point. I don't want to have to do this manually, so I'm just going to ask SolidWorks instead to do that for me. Now you can see the texture is a bit rubbish there. Um, so what I could do is come over here and change my texture just to make it look a bit more uh, realistic. Uh, or, as I said, this is actually melamine face, so you can see this is like a raw MDF texture that I've applied to this. But actually what I'm going to do is come over here, let's just pick up uh, some plastic, like a medium gloss. We'll just say it's white medium gloss, so that's just like a MF, or melamine faced MDF that we're going to use. Okay, on the back of the unit, I'm just going to select this surface to sketch on, and I'm just going to draw in my back panel. So now we can actually just start kind of drawing as we would regularly in SolidWorks. And we're going to extrude that. And again, instead of putting in numbers, what I like to do is to refer back to my global variables. So obviously this back panel is equal to my overall thickness of 18. And then I can come in and put my um, top and bottom panels in. So I'm just going to sketch on here. Let's just use a corner rectangle for this. So over to here. Again, I could either do a mirror or I could mirror the sketch or mirror the body. But I'm just going to select uh, both those two entities here and just do an equal. So again, they're behaving symmetrically, as you can see. And then we'll just do a uh, distance here, and that's going to be equal to that global variable called uh, overall thickness. And again, instead of actually uh, putting in numbers, I'm just going to say, OK, let's extrude it. And I'm going to say up to surface. And that then comes into that particular bit there. OK, I want to shelf right in the center of this particular part. So to do that, I'm just going to uh, pick a plane that's in the right orientation. So my top plane is where I want it. Uh, is in the kind of right orientation. If I just hold my control key, I can actually drag out one of these little corner markers and just bring it up somewhere and then just hover over this edge and I should be able to wake up a midpoint. There it is. And if I click on it, it then positions that plane right in the center. And then I can actually go ahead and sketch onto there. So I'm just going to twist it slightly so you can see what I can do. I'm just going to select this surface over here and just offset it. So I don't want my shelf to be exactly the same width. Um, I want there to be a slight clearance. So I'm going to offset it by let's say half a mil, I don't know, probably do a bit more than that in reality, but let's say half a mil, just make sure it's going in the right direction. So again, if I just zoom in, you can see that that's half a mil inside. 
And then if, if I just select this line, I can delete that sketch relation that's holding the front where it is. Now I can move the front, and I can then just put in a distance from the front here down to this edge, and we'll have that as a 1 inch or 25 mil. Then I'm going to extrude it. I'm going to go mid-plane, so I'm going to going up and down to a total value of my global variable overall thickness, which is 18, so 9 up and 9 down, and then I know that we've got that perfectly positioned on the inside. Okay, um, a couple of other things I'm going to do here, and I probably wouldn't do this in reality, but I just want to show you the, the function of being able to do this, is to actually put some batten on the underside of this just to hold this into place. So to do that, I'm just going to sketch um, a couple of lines onto this surface here, and then I'm just going to extract these edge curves. So these edge curves here, let's just convert those. We'll just do a bit of trimming there. And what I want to be able to do is to bring these entities back. Let's just build a relation here between these endpoints just to say that they're horizontal. If I just give it a twist, sorry, you can see where I am. So, and then I'm just going to offset this again. Now these lines are basically going to become um, profiles, so they're going to become battens. So I'm going to say, let's go for a, uh, an inch. Actually, sorry, let's go for a bit larger than that. Let's go for, say, two inches, maybe 50. And then I'm going to create some batten using that. So up here, structural members, I can choose a particular type. So we're going to go for some metric wood, which is going to be hardwood. Sorry, it's going to be softwood, actually. And then in here, we've got some different sizes. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and pick up my English-sized wood instead, actually. So we're going to go for some 1x2. As you can see there, we've got all these different sizes. And we can make our own profiles as well if we haven't got the ones that we want to use. And then I'm just going to click on a line. And all that does is then it turns that line into a bit of batten, as you can see. Um, things we can do with this, I can spin it around, for example. So I can make it um, you know, spin around. I can locate the profile somewhere else. So perhaps it's there that we want to be. And then if I just click any other lines, it's then going to, by default, it's actually going to miter it in the corners, as you see that joint there. But I can actually just change them into butt joints instead. So let's just change that butt joint so it's the other way and bring it in. And there's lots of other things you can do with this. Now there is a um, uh, certainly demonstrations of videos that I've done on weldment, so have a look at that to go into more detail, but I'm just doing this very quickly because this is mainly panel work that we're doing, but I just want to show you that we can work that in conjunction uh, with, with weldments. Okay, so when I OK that, that's then going to uh, turn that into my battens, as you can see there and we're almost ready to go. So next thing I want to be able to do is to um, show how to fix these certain things together. Now, in a multi-body part design, we can use um, library features to, you know, glue and screw. We can do lots of different things. So if I just open up my woodwork library, now I'm going to uh, put a link to this just in case anyone wants to use it. Um, but we've got things in here like different corners, so box dovetail, lap mitres, things like that. Under T's, I've actually got dowel pins, and I'm going to use this particular function here, these three dowel pins, to dowel some of these together. So to begin with, I'm just actually going to hide uh, every body apart from those two. So just to make it a bit clearer. So if I just right click on that, I should be able to uh, hide those bodies off. In fact, let's just go over here and we'll just select um, that one and that one. I'm just going to isolate those two bodies. OK, so if I bring up my library again, um, what we need to do to be able to use this feature is literally just drag it onto my model. So I'm just going to change my display ever so slightly so you can see what's going on. So let's just change to wireframe. And when I drag this on, SolidWorks is basically going to give me a series of references over here that I need to find. And it's actually highlighting those on this little model here, this little thumbnail. So I just need to pick the points that are being highlighted on my model that are being highlighted here. So if I just click on this point, then this face, then this bottom edge, and then that top point there, you can see that SolidWorks goes ahead and dowels it for me. Over here, I can control things like my uh, dowel side inset. So I'm just going to say, well, let's do it, say, 20 mil. And we've got 20 mil from the outside to the center of that. We can control the diameter. So I'm using a 10 mil dowel heel here, and I'm using a 25.4, so an inch long um, dowel is what I'm using. And when I click OK, it goes ahead and actually goes and creates um, those particular features for me. Now, I'm going to do an exploded view in a minute, which is going to show what it's doing. But actually what it's done is it's put a hole into this panel. So if I just change the display, it's actually put a hole in this panel. A hole in this panel is actually created for me as well, the dowels themselves, as you can see here. So this is going to become a bit clearer when I do my exploded view. Um, but it has actually done quite a few things there. Now, I would obviously do that the whole way round, but just to move things on, I'm just going to leave it as it is. 
Okay, on the bottom of my unit, I'm just going to drop a couple of sketches. So on here, I'm just going to... Now, there's some symmetry involved here, so I'm just going to draw myself a centre line that bisects there, and then also that bisects there as well. I'm just then going to draw a hole. Now, this hole is for my plinth foot. It needs a diameter 10, and it's a depth of 10 as well, but I'm just going to specify first the dimensions from the outside. So we're going to say 60 from here, and we'll say... 60 from here as well. In fact, if that's the case, I'm just going to say is equal to this dimension. So again, just using a really simple equation, we can do that. Then if I just go ahead and select this circle and this dotted line here, I can actually mirror one across the other, as you can see. So now we've got two circles. So then if I just drag a selection window over my two circles and my this mirror line instead, then actually I can mirror that across there. So I'm just using one sketched, or one dimension sketch here, and then I'm just mirroring the, them across onto the other side. And then I'm going to use a cut command. I'm going to cut to a total depth of 10, and then that's my hole for my feet. So I'm going to be dragging in my feet very soon for that. Okay, so let's create a quick exploded view, which is going to help me along here. So over here in my configurations, I can actually just uh, right click on this and create an exploded view. So what I might want to do is say, take this panel and pull it over a bit. Maybe take this one and pull that over a bit. And we might take uh, this panel and pull that back a bit. And as you can see, we've actually got our dowels here as well. So I can actually bring those over just to show that those dowels are um, joining these two panels together. And then finally, I might just take these bodies here and just pull them down a bit so we can identify those in the bill of materials. Uh, sorry, the cut list. Okay, so once that's done, I'm just going to do a save. So let's just save this onto my desktop, just so I know it is. And we'll call this, um, this might be a drawing number or file name. Down here, I'm going to give it a description of uh, cabinet. In fact, I'm going to call it base cabinet. So base cabinet. And then I'm going to create a 2D technical drawing from it. So let's go ahead and do that. So before I do that, though, let's just go back over to the PowerPoint. Okay, so we've had a look there how to create multiple uh, body parts. So it's a way of basically being able to create full cut lists, which I haven't shown just yet, but we're going to put that onto the drawing, uh, onto the technical drawing. We can define things like fixing details, so box tail, um, sorry, box, dovetail, biscuit, any of those kind of joints. We can also do things like dowels, which is what I've showed you there. We can then save it as a part, or we can export it out as an assembly if we want to. But fundamentally, it's quick. It's a lot quicker than having to do these in assemblies. And as I said, you can always turn it into an assembly afterwards. So it's really a, a great way of being able to manage that kind of thing.